today I'm going to show you how you can transform yourself into Sasuke. I don't dream of the future anymore, only the past. <laughs> My <choice. laughs> I've boiled these four tutorials into one single video, so you have all the information you need in one single place. Welcome to the first step of our tutorial, and also the most important one, the tracking. For this part, I'm gonna show you how you can create a nice track just like this. First, let's add in our camera, and make sure you have the free add-on installed GeoTracker and Face Builder. Let's go over to the GeoTracker tab and put in our clip and assign the camera to the camera we just created. Take a snapshot of your first frame using this burger icon, go a few frames ahead and repeat the process. Now that we have our screenshots, let's go over to the face builder, create a new head and add in our images. Click on the first image and press auto align. Do this with every other image as well. Let's disable the lower neck because we won't be needing that. Go back to your screenshots and align the grid to your face. Do this with every screenshot. Don't worry if it's not perfect, we're only gonna be using the top of the head. Go back to the Geo Tracker tab and assign the geometry to the head that we just created. Change the focal length to the value that match your camera and if you don't know, don't worry, just check the estimate focal length. I know this is going to sound funny, but exit the pin mode by pressing escape and then click on start pin mode. Yet another grid appears in front of us. Luckily, this one isn't that time consuming. Align it with your face and press track. Amazing. But not perfect, we're gonna have to help it a little bit here. Go to the frame before our tracking fails and delete the rest. Let's press track again. Not bad, but we have a little issue here. Our tracking snaps as I move my head up. This is gonna be a big problem for our hair simulation. Fortunately, there's a really easy solution to this problem. Find the frame of the snap and delete a few keyframes forward. This moves out the motion of our tracking to something more likable. And when everything looks fine, go down to the scene tab and press export. This will create an empty and you can actually link objects onto the empty that contains the tracking information, opening up a door for some cool opportunities. Now that we're done with the tracking, let's move on to the hair. Creating hair can be really really cool and fun to play with, but it can also have its problems. So I'm gonna show you how to get the correct results for your video. Select your head and go into edit mode. When you're in edit mode, select the vertices that you want the hair to emit from. With all of the correct vertices selected, let's go into the data panel and add a new vertex group and press assign. Let's call this vertex group hair vertices. It's finally time to add some hair. So let's go out of the edit mode and go into the particle tab and press the plus sign. Let's make sure that the particle type that we're emitting is hair. Go down into the vertex groups and assign them all to the vertex group that we made earlier. And make sure that you check this advanced button, giving us some more options for the hair. Go into the render properties, down to curves, viewport display, and set the shape to strip. Let's give the hair some color. So let's go into the material properties, add two new materials, and make one of the materials all black and call it hair color. Go back into the particle properties, down to render, and set the material to the hair color. Perfect. Instead of our 3D model looking like Tommy Pickles, we're gonna go into our particle system and tweak with some settings. And rather than me going through all the steps one by one, you can just pause the video and follow this excellent recipe I made for some bulletproof anime hair. It's very worth mentioning that if you go into the children tab and go down to the kink, you can choose some different styles for your hair. You can for example make it curly, wavy, or even braided. It's very cool, but for this video, I'm gonna go with nothing. It's time to give a nice haircut. So go into the particle editor, select tool, go down to options and check the children tab. Use the comb tool and style your hair. I'll start off by laying most of the hair down flat in the back and the sides of the head, and then I'll comb a middle parting in the front giving us this look. Please don't overthink this part too much. Hair is usually very messy in the first place, so don't worry. Switch over to the puff tool and give it a few clicks here and there. Within a few minutes, we have some amazing hair. And when we add some wind in there too, it's going to look really good. Add a force field and select wind. I'm gonna place it right beside our character. And then I'm going to go into the physics properties and then I'm going to animate the strength of the wind. Putting the value between one and 30 between the keyframes to give some randomness to the wind. 
I'll copy my first 10 keyframes and paste them onto the rest of the timeline. And that looks absolutely extraordinary. We're almost ready to render this out, but first go into the output settings and set it to this file format. Go down into the encoding and set it to PNG and set the color to RGBA. Go to the render output and enable motion blur, expand the film and set it as transparent. Very promising, but we need to separate the hair from the head. Make a new collection. Select the head and copy it into the new collection. Select the head and go into the particle system and remove the particle system. Move the entire collection above all of the other collections and go into the filters and enable this button right here and click on this soap bubble. The next time you press render, the hair should be separated from the head. Congratulations, you've done very well so far. We can now look at our hair and be very proud. But there's still some key features missing. I'll show you how to blend the hair more seamlessly, adding in the showering gun and giving your skin a more fantasy look. Later on, we'll be adding in the 3D scene and compositing where it all comes together. Without further ado, let's start off by making the hair look a bit more integrated. We'll do that by adding in some shadows. The easiest way to do this is simply by duplicating the hair layer, move it a tiny bit down, apply Lumity color, and turn the exposure all the way down to the basement. Next step is giving the layer fast box blur and turning it up to 18. Turn down the opacity a little bit, mask out the parts of the layer where there shouldn't be any shadows. This alone already does a lot. To integrate the hair even better into the scene, I'll add noise and fast box blur to the original hair layer. I'll go with 7% noise and 0.1 on the blur radius. Let's clean up that background by using the key light effect and removing the unnecessary trash with a mask. If you're dealing with some annoying grain, you're more than welcome to mask it out manually. Or you can use the roto brush just like I did. Let's give ourselves that fantasy look. And for this part, we'll be using the software EB Synth. Don't worry, it's free. And what it basically does is that you can change one frame of your video and then it converts that one frame onto the rest of the rest of the onto the rest of your onto the rest of the rest of your video and it works like absolute magic. So start off by toggling off the hair, take a screenshot of your first frame and export it as a PNG. Create a folder and call it keyframes and rename your clip to frame one. Open up Photoshop and import your image. If your footage looks like this, just duplicate the layer and you'll be fine. I'll color my hair black so my own hair will blend better with Sasuke's hair. Now we're going to duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl J and invert the image by pressing Ctrl I. Change the blending mode to vivid light and go to filters, others and select high pass. Adjust depending on your own photo. But for this example, I went with five pixels. Go to filters again and select Gaussian blur. For this example, I went with 1.8. Now I'm gonna have to ask you to press alt on your keyboard and click on layer masks down here. And what we've now achieved is the ultimate ability to recustomize our face by giving us utterly perfect skin. And to unlock this feature, click on the brush, make sure it's set to paint white and start brushing all of your beautiful imperfections away, giving us a really nice fantasy look. And when you're all finished and done, go up to files and export it as a PNG and replace the frame one photo that we exported earlier. Let's hop back into After Effects and render out our video as a PNG sequence. It's important that you remember to set the channel to RGB plus alpha so we get a transparent background. Let's create a new folder and call it video. We'll also name the file frame. And you can go ahead and press on that beautiful render button. Open up EBSynth and on the keyframes panel, we'll click select and choose our frame one that we made in Photoshop. Go ahead and click select on the video panel and find the PNG sequence that we just exported. Select the first frame and press open. Let's run this bad boy, press the synth button and watch as the magic happens. It's worth mentioning that it does 90% of the job for you, but you're gonna have to do the important last 10% because it's not perfect. Import and find the folder EB synth exported out to and select the first frame and press export. Make sure that it's checked as a PNG sequence when you open it. Let's drop that bad boy right onto our timeline and whoops. It seems like we've stumbled upon a little problem here. The duration of the PNG sequence doesn't match up with the original video. Did I mess up here? Absolutely not. Find the PNG sequence in the project panel, right click on it and go to interpret footage and click on main. Ah, there we go. PNG sequences are imported with 30 frames per second as per default. So let's clear things up here and set the frame rate of the PNG sequence to 25 so it matches our composition frame rate. And voila. Now we can lean back and watch the power of EB synth. 
and I look like a fucking crackhead. But don't you worry about it. Remember when I told you about those 10%? That's where we're at right now. So even though EB Synth turned me into a monster from the sewers, we're just a few clicks away to become human again. Find your favorite masking tool and remove the parts you don't like. I'll set the masks to subtract, turn up the feather a good bunch and animate the mask path so we keep our face good looking throughout the whole video. For this video, I mask out both of my eyes and also my mouth. And when all of that is said and done, we have a result that we can be pretty pleased with. And if you're like me and didn't get a haircut before filming, you might want to mask out some of that crispy hair. Instead of me looking all orange and green, I'll give the video a little color grade by adding in an adjustment layer, putting Lumigi color on it, pressing auto and adjusting the temperature and tint slightly. But these settings are going to vary from video to video. And now I'm pretty excited because the only thing we're missing now is adding in the Sharingan. So go ahead and find a nice picture of a cool Sharingan and drop it into your timeline. So go ahead and mask out both of those eyes. Add in a null object and call it left eye. Click on your video layer, find the tracking panel and track your left pupil. Make sure to click on the edit target and select our null object that we call left eye. Go to the first frame and click track forward. Whenever your tracking fails, stop the tracking and go back to the frame where the tracking fails. Readjust the tracking point and click track forward again. When your track is completed, click apply. Select the left sharing gun and parent it to the null object using this twirly whip. Position the left sharing gun on top of your own eye. I turn down the opacity slightly to help me get a more precise result. Let's change the blending mode of both of the eyes to vivid light, making them look way cooler. And to make the eyes look more integrated, I'll put on a mask to make sure it looks like they're under my eyelids. Set the mask to intersect and turn up the feather slightly. And animate it throughout the whole video making sure that they're under my eyelids during the whole video. You can even put on a glow effect to get some cool red emission. Or even use the curves effect to get your desired look. Let's render this bad boy out, set the file format to QuickTime, and once again set the channel to RGB plus alpha to get that transparent background. And there you have it, a very nice looking Sasuke. It is now time to place our beautiful Sasuke into a 3D scene and later on compositing everything into a beautiful masterpiece. Let's start off by opening up Blender and add in our Sasuke. We'll do that by adding in an image as plane. Move your Sasuke to your desired location and add in a plane underneath him. This plane will act as the ground he's standing on. I'll be using the free add-on GeoScatter to create a realistic environment. Go to the GeoScatter tab and assign the emitter to the plane. Scroll down to Biome Scatter and click on Open Biomes. This greets us with a variety of different biome presets that you can use. These biomes does have a heavy toll on Blender, so I recommend you toggle the GeoScatter off when you're not using it. Let's get some nice trees into the scene. I'll be using the Botanic add-on, which is great for animated trees. Although it is not free, you do have some nice options in the GeoScatter instead for some nice animated plants. In the Botanic add-on, click on Spawn Asset and choose your favorite tree. Make sure Make Edible is checked and press OK. The animation is super simple. Just click Add Animation, select your desired wind type and adjust the strength of the wind. Easy. I used Kakabunshin and Jutsu on the trees and pasted them around in my scene. The background is looking quite empty. Let's fix that really quick by going into the free add-on Sketchfab and search for a mountain. This one looks quite nice, so I'll import that model into the scene, rescale it and move it all the way in the back. The background is not quite juiced up 100%. Add a new image as planes and find yourself a fitting sky. This guy also goes way behind behind the mountain and is scaled up. And just look at that beautiful moon above the mountains. What a nice day, except you're not shiny enough. Add in a sphere, place it on top of the moon and turn the emission up to 2.5. And since this isn't the flattest place on the earth, subdivide your plane a good bunch of times and go into the sculpt mode to add some small bumps around the area to integrate that edge between the ground and the background way better. And to light this scene up, I added in a sky texture, which functions as a sun and played around with it until I had a nicely lit night scene. In the final result, you can see that there's some fog moving around in the scene. And to do this, add in a cube into the scene and scale it way up. I played around in the shading tab and ended up with this node setup. Oh, sorry guys, this node setup is not free of charge. To see this node setup, you have to be a subscriber to Combat Guard VFX. 
And to give the fog some movement, I just animated the rotation a tiny bit. And this looks really nice. Then I had this crazy idea to animate a point light on top of both of the showering guns to add some more glow. I can't say I recommend you doing this. It took me 15 minutes to track and adjust the strength throughout the video. And I'm pretty sure it should be way easier to achieve this effect in After Effects. But whatever. I also added in a spotlight to get that slight red color on the leaves of the trees. And at this point, I'm pretty satisfied with the looks of everything. So it's time to animate the camera, add some depth of field, and use the free add-on camera shakeify to add some handheld movement to the final result. I also added in a point light on top of my head to make it seem like the moon is illuminating on my hair. Then I actually went back into the world shading and added in a color ramp to get a more blue feeling to the scene. And stop! Holy shit, this looks insane. I definitely want my scene to look like this at some point of the video. So I animated the color ramp from that blue look to absolute evil darkness in the end of the video. Then I made some final touches with the camera and decided it was time. Welcome to the last part of this video, the compositing. For this part, I'm mostly going to be giving you the tools you need and somewhat following you through the process and the thoughts you need to consider. But I need you to wake up because this part requires you to focus. Now let's get started. The first thing I'm going to add into this scene is my absolute favorite feature, a simple dust layer where you play around with the opacity. It's like the most free thing ever to make your scene look cinematic. And not only am I going to apply dust on the whole scene, I'm also going to add in dust on top of my eyes. I want you to think of it this way. Brightness equals more light. And therefore there should be more dust particles visible around my eyes since they're emitting light. And in the end of the scene when the light source is nearly only the red eyes, I turned the temperature of the dust up to a warmer color so it matches the light source. Then I made a simple color grade on the video and later on I tried on a few LUTs and then I ended up with a result that looked way better than my original color grade. And instead of me rendering myself out from Blender, I went through the pain of masking myself out with the Roto Brush tool because I'm too lazy to render out all of the individual layers in Blender. And with this mask in place, we're going to create some insane stuff. I'll start off by blurring out the background a bit more. And do you remember when I said this? Except you're not shiny enough. Well, he's still not shiny enough. So I'm gonna add in an adjustment layer, put on the effect light rays. I went with these settings and animated the center of the light rays on top of the moon. And I can now say that I'm finally satisfied with the moon. So I won't be hurting his feelings anymore. And when I go demon mode at the end of the scene, I added in another adjustment layer and turned down the exposure a bit more in the background. And what really completes a scene is the lighting. The most logical thing to do would be to set up your lights before recording. But if you're like me and always think, I'll fix it in post, then this is going to be very useful in information for you. So I hope you're sitting very comfortable in your seat because this might or might not be the most time consuming part of the process depending on your own scene. But I can assure you that this will transform your scene into a masterpiece. Download this free add-on create slide wrap and I promise you you won't regret it. When this effect is applied it will create an edge of light around your character simply giving the illusion that the moon illumination is so strong that the light is hitting our character around the shoulders hair and basically every edge around us, which really completes the idea of this whole scene. And if you want to control the exact parts of the body you think there should be more light on, you can create masks like I did and control the light wrap. But this can be very advanced and sometimes hard to wrap your head around since you need two different masks, one that applies the edge color and one that subtracts it. It's really not necessary though, you can leave the light wrap effect alone. But if you're picky like me and you can figure this out, then you're gonna be all set. And now I'm going to blow your mind even more. If you thought the light wrap was cool, just wait until you see this. Turn all of your layers into 3D layers, add in a light, set the light type to ambient light and turn the intensity down to 100. This does nothing. But when I add in a normal point light, it will light on top of the ambient light. That means that if we didn't add in the ambient light, the point light would be our only source of light in the scene. Anyways, I'm gonna use this setup here to light up different parts of the scene that I would like to be more bright. I'll be using two lights. Both of the light types are set to spotlights and I will mostly just be lighting up the hair, the left side of my face and then animating the lights throughout the video so the light stays in its place. Then I'll make an adjustment layer, turn the exposure down Add in a mask, set it to subtract, 
to get these cinematic black bars. Then I did a quick track on the eyes and added in some cracks around them. I set the layer type to soft light to blend the cracks better on top of my face. I also added in a tiny bit of blur to make it look a bit more realistic and integrated. As we come to an end of this transformation, please remember this. You may or may not have been able to follow through this entire tutorial and ended up with a good result, but at least you might have picked up some beautiful gems that you can use from now on in other projects. Becoming better is taking one step at a time, creating and learning based on your past experiences. Even I'm not 100% satisfied with my result. There are lots of things that I could have improved on, but with this information in mind, I'm not dwelling on the things that I could have done better, but inspired to try again and create some even better than before. Thank you for joining me on this journey and may we keep on creating.